Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're having a great day today. This is the third episode in our super cheap Strat Relic and Guitar Build project. Hopefully you've seen episodes one and two, and if you haven't, then please go back and check those out. But if you have, or you just want to stick around, then we've got a lot to get through today. It's going to be a great episode. Now the reason I'm not showing you the front of this guitar just yet is because I'm going to save that big reveal until the end. Today's a massive episode where I'm going to go through all of the aging of the hardware, the sanding of the body, Every single thing I've done to this guitar is going to be condensed into this one episode today, so please stick around. I did so much to this guitar, I can barely even believe it's the same instrument that I started with. It's taken a good few weeks to get this guitar to this stage. I reckon I've got about 10 to 15 hours into this guitar so far, and there's still a little bit more work to be done. But I just couldn't wait any longer and I had to share this guitar with you, it's absolutely awesome. So without further ado, let's take a deep dive into exactly what processes have gone into this guitar to get it into this condition. And stick around to the end for the big reveal. So what you can see I'm doing here guys is I'm sanding off the body. I'm using a sanding pad, that's the grey thing in my hand there. And it gives a little bit of sponginess to it, so it feels a lot better in your hand if you just use sanding paper. It doesn't sort of mould around the contours of the guitar very nice, so I really recommend getting a nice six, seven, eight hundred grit wet and dry sanding pad. It really does come in very beneficial for jobs like this. I know some guys use electronic oscillating sanders, but I just don't think you can get such a good finish with those. When you do it by hand, it does take a lot longer, and I've got about seven or eight hours into this body. And obviously I just recorded various sessions over that time. You can see that I've got my workbench set up, and I just left the guitar in this condition, and I kept coming back occasionally over about three days. So whenever I found the time, I'd come and have a go. There's no start-stop requirements. You can just put it down and pick it back up where you left off. What I'm doing is I'm wet sanding, so there's no dust going everywhere. Got a clean, fresh towel down just to make sure that there's nothing sort of sharp digging into the paint that's going to add any kind of defect to the paint that I don't want to be there. So I'm being quite precise about this. Obviously I've sped this footage up so we're not going to sit here through the whole lot I'm just showing you the sort of pertinent parts really. Wiping with a nice clean soft cotton rag and doing all kinds of parts of the body. So what I'm actually doing is I've, I've built in this kind of backstory in my head that the sort of life that this guitar would have had as a relic. It's been around the block and it's been around the houses and so you want to wear away the parts that you believe in your own mind or that you've seen on other guitars where the guitar would be nicely worn and aged and relict. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually sanding through the polyester finish and that is a very hard job to do. What happens with polyester is that it kind of sinks into the paint and it sinks right through almost into the wood in some cases and some finishes. So occasionally I'll fit the pit guard to make sure that the bit that I've sanded is where I want it to be so there's no point sanding and taking a long time wearing away the polyester and the paint if it's actually going to be hidden by the pit guard. So what we can see here is I'm just showing you little bits where I've worn through the polyester and, and eventually underneath that you get to the first coat of paint and that's the top paler colour that you can see here. It was a welcome surprise to see that the undercoat is a slightly darker, kind of more sea foam, traditional sea foam green colour. The top coat is actually a bit more kind of sonic blue, uh, surf blue colour. But as I got through the polyester and through the poly sludge there, you can actually see that it's a bit of a darker colour, which I think looks really good. It really sets it off. I think that's a bit more of a traditional sea foam colour under there. So what I tried to do is go through all of the polyester and what I'm doing is I'm removing every single bit of the polyester off that guitar. So it's a completely flattened matte finish. And I'm particularly paying attention to areas such as the body contour, any bit that you would imagine in your backstory for this guitar where it's taken a lot of wear and tear. Taking off all of the top coat of the polyester and then with a lot more sanding you can get through the first coat of paint and eventually it'll start to fade through to the undercoat. Some guitars won't even have an undercoat, it'll just be raw wood. So what I was doing is I was going through the polyester, going through the top coat. In some areas I've even gone through the undercoat and revealed the wood. And that kind of really gives it that relic look. All this is done very carefully by hand, no electric sanders 
takes a long time as I say, but it is really worth it and you really get to the feel and, and the look of it. Wiping it all clean. At this point I've probably spent about six or seven hours over a few days getting it in this condition. And there's still a little bit of work to do, but I want to save things for you guys to see in the final unveiling. So the next step here is I'm copper shielding the internal cavities of the guitar. I did have a little bit left over from a previous guitar rewire that I did a while ago, so I didn't really want to buy any more, I just happened to have some. And you can be kind of creative with this, you don't have to be particularly precise, just as long as it's a really good fit and the internal cavities are clean and dry. This stuff is sticky backed so it will adhere to the surface pretty well, this, this is painted so it sticks fantastically. Obviously there you can see I've taken care to make sure that the grounding wire that goes through towards the drum block in the back, make sure that you don't forget that's there, it's quite easy to wire everything up and forget to ground the guitar. And the whole purpose of this it actually is to shield it from the 50-60 cycle home that single coil pickups tend to suffer from. And you'd be shocked how much this really does isolate the guitar sound and, and keep it absolutely hum free. It's really, really worth doing. So as you can see, I'm just cutting it randomly and I'm kind of figuring out where it'll go to make maximum use of, of what I've got left. I've kind of partially done there and as you can see I've left two or three zones coming up onto the top of the guitar which will actually touch the underside of the pickguard. And the foil on the back of the pickguard forms part of that circuit and also helps kill the interference. You can see here I'm again applying the same kind of circular sanding. Lots and lots of time spent sanding that, making it a nice matte finish pick guard. It's actually an aged white. And what I wanted to do was also add some kind of nicotine tobacco colour to various areas of that where you would actually see dirt accumulate over the years. And this is a really good tip. If you get some kind of wood stain, you can apply it to various areas. Just have a look on Google Images or somewhere maybe in a vintage guitar magazine and you'll see that a lot of them have dirt around the control areas and around the pickups. So it's quite easy to simulate that. You just apply a coat or two of this kind of wood dye, not particularly dark wood dye, and you can let it dry or you can go straight in. and then use a nice sort of magic sponge and just wear away the edges and what you're trying to do is blend it in. Obviously when you first put that on you can have some very defined swirls in it. So you're just going over it very very lightly leaving most of it on. Give yourself a nice clean workbench to seat your nice pick guard on. There's no point having a brand new looking pick guard on a vintage looking guitar, it just doesn't seem to sit right to my eyes anyway. So you can see I've put it around the controls there and you can see I've put it on the section just below the pickups where your fingers would touch. And all you're really looking to do is just blend it in nice and evenly. You can keep the sponge for one or two guitars, it doesn't take much off, it just gives it a nice blended feel. You'd be surprised how dramatic this adds, a kind of really vintage look to it once all of the controls are back onto this pickguard. So now we're moving on to the, the actual control dials themselves. So we've got the volume and the two tone knobs. So I really recommend rubbing the same stain into the grooves and maybe in various areas and blend them in a little bit. Just make sure you've, you've got it in there. It just adds to the kind of overall look and it dries perfectly and won't rub off on anything. So now we've moved on to doing the uh, trem block cavity plate. And you can see that's a really bright white, sort of icy white color. Obviously that won't do with the vintage kind of patina of the guitar that we were going for. So again, what I'm doing is I'm really applying quite a heavy couple of coats to this. And it sticks to the plastic really well. Of course you want to sand it off lots and lots of wet and dry on there, get it really matte. And stick it on quite heavily, it doesn't matter if it gathers in the corner, that just again adds to the dirty kind of feel of it. It doesn't look mucky or messy in terms of 
a vintage guitar, that is what you'd expect to see of a kind of heavily used guitar. So let that dry. So now we're moving on to relicking the hardware. And this is uh, where the elbow grease continues. Lots and lots of sanding, wet and dry. And we're using an 800 grit wet and dry sanding block. Here you can see I'm doing the, the neck plate gold plated. Very, very thin. What I've done is I've given it an initial sort of very, very brief sanding and now I'm applying the ferric chloride. You can get this at most hardware stores. Just leave this on for a minute or two. If you're using nickel or if you're using chrome, it's really important just to leave it on a short space of time. You can see how devastated that now looks and it's only been on two or three minutes. I've actually gone through a process before this, after sanding, where I left it in a container with the ferric chloride in to let the fumes etch its way into it. So painting it on there was something that only lasted a few minutes and it took the finish straight off. Gold hardware is notoriously thin. So now the neck is very very good, it's got nice rolled edges but I still felt there were a couple of sharp little bits on occasional frets so I'm just using some wire wool here. A lot of people don't like using wire wool and the reason for that is that the little tiny fibres as you're rubbing it up and down the frets can come off and go onto the magnets of the pickups but as you can see this neck is not attached to the guitar, it's nowhere near the pickup so it really is a fantastically soft and, and it's not too abrasive tool to be able to just round those edges off. There's lots of ways of doing it with files and, and we'll come onto that in later videos. But for this, going very very softly and it didn't need much tweaking at all. And again, moving further up that neck, now obviously we're onto the, the tuners. And because these are gold, I have tried at this point already to apply the ferric chloride directly to them just to see if it would etch anything into them and uh, it didn't really work. So all I'm doing now is using 1000 wet and grit sandpaper and just literally letting the weight of the paper and just the weight of my fingers with no pressure just dust them up really and take that, that glossy finish. You can see that the glossy finish there on the left and the, and the sort of after effects of just giving it a, a very gentle brush with that wet and dry it really does have a massive effect on it. It looks nice and it's got like a kind of patina to it. We're looking for that kind of a slightly corroded, kind of tarnished look. Don't want to sand away the full glossy finish of it to, to reveal a kind of undercoat metal which, which will be there and very cheap. These weren't expensive tuners, they're not fender tuners, but they've, they're really very good. They've got a high gear ratio, so they'll be, they'll be very accurate. And as you can see, I'm just applying them back in now after taking off the old sort of chrome set, and I've, I've kept those for perhaps another guitar build. But for this one, we've gone for very similar quality in fact, but actually it's just the aesthetics that we're looking to change. So we're just sticking in the last tuner now. All goes in very nicely, very straight. Make sure you pay attention to where the holes are. Make sure you pay attention to where the locating screws are and tighten those down. And don't over crank them. You can really split the wood if you start to crank them down with tools. You can see I've got the various decals going on there. It's going to be my guitar, personalised to my own personal taste, so I'm not going to try and sell this. I've actually snapped off the string tree by accident. The screw was very poor quality and I was trying to get it out, it actually snapped. So I've got to do some magic on that a bit later on. I'm also going to switch out the string tree. I realise that doesn't work. I like the roller style, but it's completely the wrong colour. And so we're moving on to the heart of the guitar. We're putting in the electronics and the pickups. You can see I've already loaded in the 250 CTS pots. I'm just loading in the Oak Grigsby style switch. It's not a true Oak Grigsby, it's an American copy, very good quality. I just happen to have that in my kit bag already and I'm using silver solder throughout. I'm using a very traditional wiring setup, traditional for vintage single coil guitars. I'm using cloth covered wire wherever possible. And the pickups are Alchemy Alnico 5 pickups, single coils of course. Now I'm going to use a slightly different mix up here. I'm using 022 and 047 in the bridge capacitors just for that slightly darker tone on the on the bridge. Now of course to ground it I've got to get the bridge back on there. 
just relicking that up a little bit more and screwing everything back in place. I'm using the original bridge. I may eventually replace that for gold version, but for now I'm pretty happy with that. A very thin block at the back, but as I've already mentioned, I'm going to use some hardwood to hardtail this guitar. And you can see the soft felt pad to stop the springs reverberating. Everything's hooked up, cables in place. And we're going to get that boat jack back in place. It's got a Switchcraft jack loaded in there. And I think we're about ready for the big reveal, guys. So ladies and gentlemen, what did you think to that? It's a lot of hard work, I do admit that. And there's no easy way to get that kind of workmanship, but it's well worth it in the end. And I'm absolutely over the moon with this guitar. So guys, if you like this video and the series, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me and the channel out. And if you wanna hear this thing being played, tune into the next video. So for now guys, keep on playing.